science fiction triple feature, hosted by Vanishing Point and Right to Follow. Right to Follow is Evergreen's current student theater production team, and they've been quite busy this past quarter. This is but one of several productions they put on this winter. Vanishing Point is the college's new literary and arts magazine. We've been gathering submissions for our upcoming spring edition, and we still are. If you look up there, one day, there's a stack of Vanishing Point's previous fall issue, free for yours to take. Science fiction has been with us for a little under 200 years, introduced by Mary Shelley with her novel Frankenstein in 1818. Since then, the genre has brought into thousands of different possibilities, taking us to other planets, back in time, and to alternate dimensions. Usually based around humans, sci-fi utilizes mind-expanding concepts, exploring ideas others have invented, and looking at the ethical and moral consequences of human actions. Tonight, we have three short plays in the style of the show. We have a one act dealing with consumerism, and a tale about virtual reality. But first, we are going to enjoy a short lecture on artificial intelligence, penned by Mason Bennett. There will not be an intermission um, this time, because it's very short. And the bathrooms are located outside of either of those doors in the big center of this weirdly shaped building. Also, I must ask you to silence your communicators and cellular devices, or else we'll have to fry your bank brains with extraterrestrial tech. Now, please sit back and enjoy what I believe is the greatest genre of the human imagination. Hello, undergraduates, and welcome to Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. Unless you've been academically misplaced, in which case I, it, I would like to direct you to the advising office, it is required that you, one, have completed all of the prerequisites for this class, which includes every single robotics class that the school has to offer, two, that you have the time and energy to dedicate at least 50 hours a week to your schoolwork, and three, that you have an interest, no, a dedication to intelligence and robotics programming. If any of these do not apply to you, I suggest you drop this class today. Now, I'll just pass around a syllabus, which you will have to read on your own, as I am not in the business of wasting time. Okay, now let's start, shall we? So, today is going to be mostly review, considering the prerequisites for this course. First, we're going to start with the history of artificial intelligence. So we're going to begin with Alex, uh, Isaac Asimov, who coined the three rules of robotics which are, one, a robot may not, uh, may not injure a human being or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. Two, a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Yes? Actually, cutting-edge programmers are entirely able to issue the three laws as they are not nearly flexible or specific enough to produce an actual and moral intelligence. I mean, if you've read any Asimov, it's entirely focused on the faults in its own rules. An excellent point, but we will talk about that later in the quarter. <clears throat> the father of modern computer science is considered to be Alan Turing, who is most famous for his work cracking the Nazi Enigma code. He invented the first computer, which is called the Turing machine, and it was, it was, it just manipulated things by marking it based on a mathematical sequence. When he also developed the Turing test, which is still used today by the most prolific AI developers. Yes? Dr. Cryer, I feel you're giving an over this simplistic representation of issues. There is to this day a constant debate on the relative sentence of AI, and Turing was the first one to bring this up, especially at a time when the passively sentient AI was really science fiction. And truly, what separates us from our artificial counterparts? It seems very human essentialists to drop life so called internal thought, but we still have a way to prove that human mind is any more internal thought than that of a computer. Excuse me, but this is not a philosophy class, and we do not have time for this. Also, I do not appreciate your gloss on the of sexual orientation, which is typical of the queer erasure of rampant, especially in STEM fields. If you would kindly let me return to my lecture. Okay. Some of the earliest development in artificial intelligence was during the late 30s to early 50s, based on Turing's theory of computation, which centered around the idea that mimicking human neural pathways with electrical circuits. Modern computation machines have long since departed from this 
than the human idea of neural replication. What? Dr. Pryor, I find your lecture to be woefully behind the times. Maybe I should have expected this from an introductory course, but due to the prerequisites, I thought it'd be a little less remedial. Excuse me. <sighs> Words have been going on for decades on the configuration of the human brain and the wiring process. The very idea that robotic and organic thought are two different distinguishable entities with different laws and layouts is animated back to the new life works. I personally have done lab work integration. That is enough. What is your name? It is West, Dr. Pryor. West Eckhart. I'll see you after class in my office. Yes, but I have one more thing to say about this. Well, needless to say, we have come a long way from the simplistic ideas of our predecessors. We now have software that learns, that can gather facts from thousands of con conversations and pass the Turing test with up to 59% accuracy. Artificial intelligence has become an important part of our modern lives. The phones in your pockets, for instance, contain artificial intelligence. Many companies and government officials rely on them for a variety of purposes. But what really merits intelligence? Would you call your central heating an intelligence because it learns the most effective way to heat a home? Certainly you would not. No, there is a definite difference between intelligences. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse you indeed, as if any of this information is new to us, as if it is any way helpful. Let me tell you, I have a very grim outlook for this course. And then I suggest you find a new one. I transfer immediately before you acquire credit. I am tired of the assimilation of this idea of merit artificial intelligence. Work has been going on for decades. I'm ready to share some implicit philosophical arguments absolutely useless. Mr. Eckhart, this is not the time for your time to distinguish when there are geniuses out there right now making science fiction a reality, creating intelligence that can match, even surpass that of human capacity. Uh, dude, it, it, it's not a big deal. If you have a problem with my course, I suggest you take it up with me after class. We're still really limiting up the steps of intelligence. Modern respect to our care is ancient ideas of outdated, pretentious scholar. Mr. Eckhart! I would like to request you leave my classroom immediately. You are spoiling the minds of these students. You limit them. <laughs> Actually, if we could go back to class, that'd be great. How can it be progress when we limit ourselves only with modern science as soon as possible? How will we better ourselves, climb past the human condition, when we can't even look beyond our own noses? We brave the very depths of nature, take back its secrets, leave our moral coil behind, and break the frontiers of our very being. What are you even talking about? New life. Redefining what it means to be human. We have the capacity, the power, to create something better than ourselves. And in the process, better ourselves. We can create something that is more than our vision. This is ridiculous. It is possible, Dr. Pryor. With xenoelectric neurotransplant development, we can- Xenoelectric! That is highly unethical. Not to mention impossible. Is it impossible, Doctor? Is it? Yes, it is. I'm calling security. Oh dear. What in the West Eckert? West Eckert. Be not a demon, demon. Ha! You who brought me on this accursed world would call me demon. You will.
But the state has been tormenting me. Because you abandoned me. Do you know the abomination? Stop, stop. OK, you guys are not listening to each other. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Breathe in. Friend. 
Anybody out there want to be Kenneth's friend? I want to be Kenneth's friend. <laughs> See? People are willing to be your friend if you just give them the chance. Give them a chance? Ha! Who has given me a chance? You and West. You lock me up like a dangerous, rabid animal. It's because you are dangerous. And you want me stop! Oh! What are you? What? You guys should have been a long time ago! What? No! Let me finish it! I have to deactivate it! Are you a brain? What's going on here? Gene Pamela Habersham? Let's then be Habersham. West Ecker, Dr. Pryor told me everything. Consider yourself officially expelled. What? Expelled? Take him away, boys. No, 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 what are you doing? No, no, you can't do this. No, no, the monster made me do this. No, you can't do this. No! no! <laughs> and who are you? Oh, uh, I'm Robin. Uh, this is Zena. And this is... Kenneth. Yeah, 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 Kenneth. And, and Kenneth is a, a, a cyborg. I know, right? Yeah, but all we were doing was trying to protect them from West. Yeah, you know, what are friends for, right? We're what? Oh, we're your friends, Kenneth. Really? Yeah, of course. Now, let's go get you fixed up. I'm sorry, I really don't care. Uh, will these students bother in class? Okay, a robot, if you're not waitlisted for this and you're not a member of the class, then you need to get out. Now, will you excuse me? I have some important dean business to attend to. So, today's lecture will be uh, online. Make sure to get all your textbooks and uh, see you tomorrow. Welcome to Electromark Electronics. Here at Electromark, we take customer service very seriously. Don't believe us? Let us show you. Benefits 
signing up? I'm so glad you asked. There are many great benefits to signing up for an Electromart Super Savers Loyalty Rewards Masters membership account, from daily reminders of our exclusive deals and promotions to 0.05% cash back, both in store and online. And that means more money in your wallet. And as a, as a bonus, if you sign up today, you'll get an extra 20% off your in store purchase of $20 or less right here, right now. Okay, um, what all do I need to sign up? I'm so glad you asked. Do you have a valid state driver's license? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure do. And you have a valid working email address? Yep. And you have a valid social security card? Uh, okay, well, yes, technically, but, um, do you actually need to see the physical, you know, card? Oh, yes, sir. We'll just scan it and keep a copy here on file. And we'll need two major credit cards as well. Okay, but, but the account itself, you know, is free, right? So, what do you need my credit card information for? Oh, well, I'm not really in a position to say. Um, well, in that case, uh, no, no thanks on the account. I'm good. Just, just the cable. Excellent! Your total, after tax, with everything here is... Everything is just a chunky cable. 2838! Okay, damn, that, that seems like a little much. Oh no, it's actually marked down from $44.99, and that's before tax. What well, you're paying today is actually a great deal. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'm paying 30 bucks for a stupid phone charge. You don't have to tell me I'm paying a great deal. I have no thoughts on that. Your total after tax is $28.38. Yeah, you know, put on your mind. Excellent! Now before I charge this card, I would like to offer you the ability to apply for an Electromart store brand credit card with exclusive rewards! Yeah! No, uh, thanks. I'm good on that. Excellent! Clearly you're not interested in receiving rewards, and that's perfectly alright. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, you'll be interested in this! Oh, is it my receipt? Because, you know, I'd be really interested in my receipt and uh, the exit. You, sir, have been randomly selected to take part in a quick survey for a chance to win a $5,000 shopping spree! Yeah! No, I don't know about that. Oh, well I haven't even told you the best part yet. We gather and hold dra drawings daily, every Earth morning at your son's rise, to determine our lucky winners. And we only pull entrance from this location. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not super big on the whole, like, games a chance thing. Oh, but I haven't even told you the best part oh, yet. Oh, hold on, I thought the last thing that you were going to tell me was In the best In addition to entering our lottery, you'll, right. you're also guaranteed to shave an extra $5 off your purchase right here, right now! And that means more money in your wallet. $5? Um, okay, uh, how many questions do you say are in the survey? Oh, it's not long at all, sir. It's just a quick series of questions to help us serve you and your needs better in the future. Does that sound okay? Uh, yeah, fine. Excellent! A little message is going to pop up on the pin pad right here. Oh. If you can just click confirm saying you've read and agreed to our terms and conditions. Uh, uh, you know, it, it seems like a lot of small print for just a simple survey. This is tempting. Oh, it's just a few legal precautions outlining what we're allowed to do with you and the information you provide us. The various ways we're allowed to gather information. You know, just covering our legal backsides. Ha! <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, whatever. Fine. Confirm. Yeah. That's good. Excellent! Now, before we begin, I would like to inform you that this interaction is going to be recorded in both audio and 3D holographic formats. Okay. And to ensure that I am not influencing your responses or altering the questions in any way, I'll be reading from a script from this point forward. Oh, alright, because this whole thing wasn't scripted to begin with. Are you ready to begin, sir? Um, yeah, sure. Question one. Did you find everything you were looking for today? Uh, yes, I would say so. Question two. Would you shop at this store, or one of our other locations again? Um, okay, I mean, I guess. Uh, 30 bucks is a lot to pay for a phone charger, but what are you going to do? It's, it's going to be the same price everywhere, right? Question three. Did you feel that, with every dollar you spent here today, it was as though a slight burden was being lifted from around your neck and shoulders? Um, okay, that's kind of a weird question. Um, is that really what they're asking people on these days now? All right, uh, no, not in any conscious sort of way. Question four. On a scale of one to five, with one representing 
very unsatisfied, and Clive representing very satisfied, how do you expect you'll be looking back on this transaction later on, when you're lying in your bed, trying to fall asleep? Okay, well, I'm going to be honest with you, you kind of weird me out with these questions right now. Um, that, that is an interesting thing to ask someone. Um, I don't know, a, a four, I guess? Uh, pretty satisfying. Question five. Would you please describe for me your first sexual experience? <laughs> now, we are primarily interested in your own subjective experience here, with particular interest in any fears or concerns you had leading up to the sexual event. Oh, okay. So, uh, you're telling me that you want me to answer this kind of stuff, you know, in public, just to find out the kinds of crap I like to buy? Did you get all of that? Oh, no, it's the one about my lowest 
spare and show long, right? That's correct, sir. Oh, well, then let's do it. Excellent answer. I don't mean to be rude, but in the interest of preserving our data uh, collection process, please refrain from creating any more further interruptions in the testing process. Yeah, okay, sure, I'll try. Resume survey. Okay. Um, what was wrong? Well, I guess, I mean, about a year ago now, um, we lost our dog. They were talking about when she the super phone chat. Um, and I don't mean lost, you know, like, oh, we lost her, we can't find her, but lost as in she died, and I run down by a car right in front of our house. Um, me, uh, my wife, my daughter, we were pretty broken up after that. We, uh, we loved that dog. Sophie, you know, that's, that's my kid. Uh, we had that dog since before she was born, and then one day, you know, just <laughs> take it from us, bam, like that. Pause survey. Sir, we need you to reach deep for some of these questions. What, my dead fucking dog isn't sad enough for you? Try to find a moment of personal shame or regret. Something you wish you would forget. Something along those lines. Please, just trust us with this. 
all of your answers will be kept completely confidential and only used internally by Electromart and its affiliates. Yeah, okay. Look, well, I'm trying to be a good sport about this, but how many questions did you say I've got left? Not many at all, sir. You're nearly finished. Yeah, no. See, how many? I want a number. Well, the survey consists of 30 questions, so at number questions. 8, you're nearly a third of the way done. Yeah, um, okay, uh, Jesus. You know what? No. Um, I'm sorry, but, but screw this. Uh, I'm done. I'm not taking your stupid survey. But, sir, you can't. The agreement you signed. Okay. Um, I don't know what you mean. I can't, alright? I'm not doing it. I'm fucking done. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm out. Oh, oh, what the fuck? What the hell did you do to my legs? It's really nothing to be concerned over, sir. It's just our zero-point energy consumer restraints. Designed to keep customers from accidentally walking away during our surveys. Oh it's technological innovations like these that keep Electromart light years ahead okay, of us. Okay, shut up. You, you just shut up, please. I just want to pay for the thing and go home. All right, you can't keep me here like this. This isn't right. Sir, there's really nothing to be alarmed over. I can control the restraints quite easily on this. Oh. We just like to ensure that our customers don't accidentally walk away during our service. Okay, there's nothing accidental going on here, alright? Turn it off. I'm leaving. Just as soon as you let go. Thank you. Um, look, I just want to pay for the thing and get out of here. No more of your wacko questions. No more of whatever that shit was you just did to my legs. I will pay you my money and I will go. Sir, you must know. That if you try to back out of the survey now, you will violate your electronic agreement and lose all rights to your purchasing privileges. You will lose that five dollar reward credit you were so excited about. You will lose access to our exclusive deals and promotions. You will even lose access to the transaction itself. You would lose your purchasing rights to this item. Do you grasp the scope of what I'm telling you? Yeah, I think I do. Um, I can't buy the stupid thing I came in here to get in the first place. And you know what? That's fine with me as long as I don't have to jump through any more of your hoops.
see it probably for the rest for tonight. Uh, there's something in the middle of Marlowe and Denny's living room. What could it be? What could be inside it? Can we go inside it? Will something come out? My dad basically lent it to Demi and me so he could help work out the kinks. Uh, you mentioned. Did I? <laughs> Oops. Also, don't mention this to anyone, okay? It's top secret stuff. It's supposed to blow away the Oculus Rift sometime next year. Really? It's not doing anything. Oh, oh, okay. Box, show us African Velts. Velts are a type of wide open rural landscape in southern Africa. Particularly, it is the flatter area covered in grass or low soil. Okay, then, this is actually pretty rad. Yeah, it's like a it's giant interactive Wikipedia. Only better. And hot or very hot so, so, what did you have me do all that programming for? Oh, right, that. Okay, box, show us cuttlefish. Cuttlefish are marine animals of the order Sapida. 
They belong to the class Cephalopoda, which includes squid, octopus. The box was basically made with an educational goal in mind, but I think with a little tweaking, it can be used for entertainment. Box, copy, cuttlefish. Copied. What are you doing? Shh, shh, just wait. Box, bring us back to the belt. Box, paste cuttlefish. <laughs> I don't get it. What? It's it's hilarious because cuttlefish can't actually fly. <sighs> Is this really what you're having me do all that work for? No, no. Maybe. Yes. But it's more than that. Anyway, I'm kind of hungry. Are you? Uh, this has been cool, Marlo. I'll uh I'll see you in class tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. See ya. Box, show me Ezra Lyons' Facebook profile. Box, copy Ezra. Copied. Box, show me Paris. Box, paste Ezra. Box, run boyfriend extension. Hey babe, I missed you. How was your day? Eh, it was kind of shit. You turned me down. Sorry about that. I bet I can make your day better. I really gotta write better script for you. Why can't I just leave shit alone, seriously? <clears throat> Box, show me Lucy Stone. Lucy Stone was a prominent American orator, abolitionist, and suffragist. Hello there. Oh, hi. I didn't know you guys could talk. The Infinity Box was created with the intention of total submersive reality. I am the virtual mate aspect of your learning experience. Think of me as a chance to have a conversation with the real Lucy Stone. That is perfect, actually. I have a biography paper due on you in a few days and I haven't even started, so uh, that's perfect. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have for me. Yes, fucking awesome. Okay, so first off. What was your early life like, and how did that impact your involvement with feminism later on? I was born in 1818, on the night of August 13th, on Coys Hill in West Brookfield, Massachusetts. My father happened to be a raging alcoholic, and as a result, my family was very poor. Watching my mother beg my father for money for bare essentials permanently scarred me. Demi, open up! Not now, Marlo. I have to go! It's a virtual encyclopedia, not a toilet! God damn it, Marlo! It's my turn. It is so not your turn, I just got in here. Hello, my name is Lucy Stone. Yeah, cool. Demi, can I just have the box for a little bit more? I want another go. You just had your go, and unlike you, I actually need to use the box. <sighs> Demi, Demi, can I please just have it for ten more minutes? Just ten more minutes? No. Five. Just While studying at Mount Holyoke Seminary School, I used to place copies of the Liberator on the tables in the school. Would you closet. shut it? The Liberator was an abolitionist newspaper Box, that- Box, quit Lucy Stone. What? No, she's helping me with my paper. Well, she's annoying. Oh, Box, keep it open. Box, close it. Box, keep Lucy Stone program open. Box, shut it down. At age 20, I left school to attend the funeral of one of my sisters. Sisters, 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 sisters. Oh, you broke her. Lucy Stone, virtual mate, is not responding. Box, force quit Lucy Stone. Opening recent items. What? I didn't say that. No, force quit. Running boyfriend extension. Hey, babe. I miss you. How was your day? What the fuck? It's, it's, it's exactly what it looks like. I don't know what to say. This is your extension. Yeah. I bet I can make your day better. Oh my god. Shut up. Sex robot! Well, what else did you think people were going to use virtual reality for? You're having sex with the box! Wow, you really jumped off the deep end with that sex assumption. Well, am I wrong? Shut up! Is this what you like, senpai? Oh my fucking god! Box, quit boyfriend extension! Voice command, not recognized. I said box, quit boyfriend extension! Voice command, not recognized. Ugh, say the thing, make it stop! I don't know, I kind of like it. Say the fucking thing. Box, force quit boyfriend extension. Get out. I don't think it's that Out! Out! Ugh. 
box. Show me Lucy Stone. Hello there. Hi. Would you like me to continue telling you about my life? In a second. I need a moment. Is something the matter? No. Yeah. My roommate is a bastard. He's using this really great tech just so we can get off to a fantasy. Sounds like the wrongdoings of a typical man. Not all men. Don't say that. God, he's just so fucking obnoxious, and he gets away with everything. Tell me. Well, first of all, one time he borrowed my phone and he didn't give it back for like... Still in here, you have an addiction. Ugh. extension is closed. But I can see him right there. Box run boyfriend extension. Hey babe, I missed you. How was your day? But Ezra's right there. Oh, what are you fucking talking about? Oh my god! Why Demi? Why? I thought he was a sex bot! It's not a sex bot, it's a virtual boyfriend. What the hell? That I occasionally have sex with. Okay. Why can't you just ask him out like a normal human being? This is so creepy! Because the real Ezra sucks. I'm right here. You suck. No, you suck. You are an awful roommate, and you're kind of a perv. Oh my god, you are a responsible bitch, and you're too tiny. How is that bad? <sighs> Bucks, tell Demi that she's the worst. Demi, I regret to inform you that you are the worst. Fox, tell Marlo that he's a lazy moron who can't get a boyfriend. Marlo, you happen to be a very lazy individual. No, wait. Fox, show Ezra Lyons and then tell him he's lazy and can't get a boyfriend. A real boyfriend. Hey, babe. Demi wants- Fox, quit boyfriend extension. You Fox, suck. keep it open. Fox, show us Lucy Stone and it's done. Oh, it's Lucy Stone. <laughs> Fine. Fox, show us Lucy Stone. Fox, show Ezra Lyons. Lucy. Ezra. Lucy. I liked it better when it was Box Paste Cuddlefish. Ezra. Fox, delete Demi. Box, delete Marlo! Lucy Stone, virtual mate, is not responding. Download Fee's 5.0 operating system is not responding. Please force quit applications and try again. Please force quit applications and try again. Please force delete applications and delete Marlo and Dave. Please delete Marlo and Debbie. Delete Marlo and Debbie. Delete Marlo and Debbie. Delete Marlo and Debbie! And your dress is tacky! 
Thank you for just one. And then that'll be it. 